I'm Mary Lapper White and welcome to my second video as part of the Community Group Folks Kindful Cafe project celebrating the folklore of Shropshire. So please relax, watch and join in by sharing your comments and insights below. This time I'm looking at Shropshire law and tradition around midsummer. And the first thing to sort out is the difference between the summer solstice, which normally occurs on or around the 21st of June, and Midsummer's Day, which is the 24th of June. In the Christian calendar, this is the eve of the Feast of St John the Baptist, and it occurs exactly six months before Christmas Eve. So the Christian festivals mirror the way in which the summer and winter solstices were related to seasonal deities. The celebrated folklorist Charlotte Byrne, in her two-volume Shropshire Folklore, published in 1883, writes, No traces have been discovered in Shropshire of any popular holiday held on Midsummer Day, which is not very helpful. However, there are Midsummer traditions throughout Europe, including in areas adjoining Shropshire, such as Herefordshire and Staffordshire. And these mainly revolved around three particular elements, the lighting of fires, processions and divination. A monk at Lillishall Abbey in the 1300s wrote, In the worship of St John, men waken at even and make them three manner of fires. One is clean bones and no wood and is called a bonfire. Another is of clean wood and no bones and is called a wake fire, for men sit it and wake by it. <laughs> the third is made of bones and wood and is called St John's fire. Now he was actually quoting from another continental writer, not from his own observation, and this has caused much subsequent confusion. The idea of a bonfire made entirely of bones does sound a bit odd too and there is another perfectly good derivation for the word bonfire from the word bon or bona meaning good. However it is very likely that something similar was happening in medieval Shropshire. Certainly in neighbouring Staffordshire up until the 19th century people were lighting bonfires on Midsummer's Eve they would leap over the fires or perhaps sometimes pass between two fires for luck. Sometimes they would light torches from the fires and carry them home to their own hearths. And occasionally they made great hoops of tallow and straw and these were set alight and rolled down hillsides. Also in Staffordshire there was another tradition of Midsummer's Eve of the witch's parliament at which people's fates were supposed to be sealed for the coming year. And the various fire ceremonies were also a way of getting protection against witches and demons. Also in Staffordshire, houses were decorated with flowers and foliage and various plants gathered at midsummer were said to have special qualities. And echoes of this tradition can be found in Shropshire. Charlotte Byrne recalls that at Pulver Batch, the oak blooms on Midsummer Eve and the blossom withers before daylight, while at Bridge North, the bracken flowers on Midsummer Eve at midnight and disappears on the first dawn of day. Now this seems to be related to a very widespread belief that fern seed dropped and gathered at Midsummer enables people to walk invisible. The great summer procession in Shropshire was the Shrewsbury Show. From its medieval beginnings as a religious procession on the Feast of Corpus Christi, it uh, became a major annual event for the various trade guilds, including great procession with lots of traditional characters, feasting at arbours in Kingsland, and a whole range of incidental activities, including one that really does sound rather ancient and special called running the shoemaker's race. In this, the contestants ran through a labyrinth carved into the turf that was a whole mile long and ended at the carving, the central carving of a giant's face. And the competitors had to 
leap into the center area and land with their feet firmly on the giant's eyes. Here's a wonderful drawing of the 1831 procession by an 11 year old boy, Samuel Halbert. And this uh, drawing is on endless pieces of paper all joined together and is now in the collection of Shropshire Museums. The procession was abolished in 1878 uh, due to concerns about public disorder. Stoke St Milborough Wake was held on the 25th of June and featured feasting and merrymaking in the churchyard and this was actually abolished by the vicar in 1820, so quite early. And one wonders whether the modern church fate is perhaps the polite descendant of these more boisterous customs. There is one curious Shropshire custom relating to divination. In Condover Park, there was a turnstile called the Wishing Gate, where a wish made at midnight on Midsummer's Eve was certain to be obtained. And the combination of a revolving gate at this time of year and this time of night is surely significant. Finally, here is a seasonal Shropshire saying recorded by Charlotte Byrne. If the cuckoo does not cease singing at midsummer, corn will be dear. Well, the cuckoo does indeed stop singing at midsummer. <coughs> but there is one even more curious belief, very widespread, including in Shropshire, which was the cuckoo turns into a hawk at midsummer. So, we have found some traces of Shropshire law and tradition relating to this time of year. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments, images, insights below, as we're really keen to hear your memories and ideas about Shropshire law and tradition. Goodbye.